you have a Rails application that is communicating with an external web service, I recommend you use VCR to help test that application. This is a Ruby gem by Myron Marston, and the way this works is that for any HTTP request, it's going to record it to what it calls a cassette. And then the next time that test gets run, it's going to replay the cassette and mock out any of the HTTP requests with the response it got last time. So this means you get the benefit of the testing the true API interaction without the penalty of the slow requests. And you can even be disconnected from the network and still run your tests. In this episode, I will use VCR to do test-driven development on the application I built in the previous episode, which communicates with a SOAP API. Let's get started. So here's that application I was working with in the previous episode, number 290, where I type in a zip code, and what I want to happen is that it communicates with a SOAP API and fetches the details. Now, I haven't added this yet because I want to add this functionality through test-driven development. Now I already have my test environment set up here, like I showed in episode number 275. As you can see, I have a request spec here, which is currently blank. What I want to do is fill this in and test drive our functionality. So I'll just add a quick spec here for the functionality we want. We want it to show Beverly Hills given 90210. Now the beauty about these high level request specs is that we can duplicate what we did in the browser. So I'll just visit the root path here, which is the page I was showing you. And then we can fill in our zip code field with 90210. And then we want to click on the lookup button. And then the page should have content, Beverly Hills, just like that. And not surprisingly, that test fails because we don't yet have that functionality implemented. Now here I'll just paste in the implementation I wrote in the previous episode to get this passing. And if you look back at the test suite, you can see it actually performed a SOAP request to gather this information, but we get a passing test. But notice it took quite a while, over two and a half seconds. Get enough of these tests together and you've got a very slow test suite. So now let's use VCR to make this test faster. So inside of my gem file here under the test group, just add the VCR gem. But this isn't the only gem we need because we also need one to handle the HTTP mocking. Now VCR supports several different libraries to do the HTTP mocking. The two most popular are FakeWeb and WebMock. FakeWeb is a bit faster, but WebMock has a, supports a wider range of libraries that do the HTTP requests. I'm going to be using FakeWeb here, which I also covered in episode 276. So I will also add FakeWeb to my gem file and then run the bundle command to install it. Now we still need to configure VCR, so I will do that inside of the spec support directory here. Make a new file called vcr.rb. And in here I will call vcr.config and pass it a block. By the way, in vcr 2.0, which is currently in beta, this is called configure instead of config. So if you're using vcr2, make sure to change that. Okay, one option I want to set here is the cassette library directory, which defines where the cassette recordings will go. And I want to put this under the spec uh, vcr directory here. And the other option I need to set here is to tell it to stub with FakeWeb, which is the gem we installed earlier. To get more information on the various options you can pass into the VCR configuration, check out the Relish documentation on VCR. It's really great, a lot of details here, and even a whole section on configuration. Now with VCR set up, you can see if we try to run our tests, we get an exception saying that real HTTP connections are disabled. So this is how VCR is configured by default. It's going to alert us if we try to make any HTTP exceptions outside of recording through VCR. Now we can enable VCR by going into our spec and calling VCR use cassette, then passing in a name such as uh, zip code 90210. And so using a slash in the name will make it into a nested directory. So we pass a block into here. That means this entire thing, anything that is a uh, external HTTP request will get recorded into the cassette. Now I just ran the specs a couple of times so you can see the result. Uh, the first time here it's actually going to trigger the request so that it can record the response. And you can see that happened to take a whopping 18 seconds because the web service I'm using isn't very reliable and sometimes it takes a while. But that kind of proves our point here because you can see the second time it ran the spec it was only around a half a second, much faster because it's using VCR to just replay the request. And then you can see, if you look inside the spec VCR directory here, 
we have a zip code directory and our 90210 YAML file, which is what VCR records the request to. You can see this has all the information about the request that was performed. First, a WSDL file is fetched, and then we do our second request for the actual zip code information. All right, so VCR is working great for us so far, but it's a bit of a hassle to manually manage our cassettes every time for each spec we want to add. It would be nicer if there was a little easier way to add and use VCR cassettes. Now, if you check out the Relish docs, you can see that VCR provides a macro called use VCR cassette for our spec, which does help with this a bit, but I actually prefer a different technique of using our spec tags. So what I would like to be able to do is instead of our spec here, just add a VCR tag onto this and then have it automatically use a cassette in here based off of the name of the spec here. So let's add this. I'm going to add this to the VCR config file under the spec support directory here, and I'll just paste in some code to do this. Basically here, I'm just reopening the RSpec configure block, and this first line here will allow me to add tags without having to specify true. So back in our spec here, uh, we would normally have to specify true here, but here we could just add it if we're setting this config line here. And that might require the latest version of our spec, so if it's not working, upgrade. And then next we have this around block, which gets executed every time it finds an example that matches that VCR tag. So first in this block, what we do is we determine a name for our cassette. And so we're doing some crazy magic here, but basically it's just going to generate sort of a smart name based off of the first word of the example description. It will make that the directory name and then make everything else the name of the file. And then we call VCR use cassette and then finish executing our example in that uh, block there. So with that bit of code, now every time we tag something with VCR, it's going to use a cassette given a name based off of the description here. All right, now let's try this out. You can see when we run our specs, it looks like it still passes crazy slow because it's generating the cassette. And now you can see we have a VCR zip code lookup directory here with a cassette which matches our description. Now sometimes you need to configure the individual behavior of the VCR cassettes. For example, there's a record mode setting which allows you to specify exactly when VCR should record a request to a cassette. The default is once, which means that it will only record a cassette once and then once it's recorded it will only play it back. New episodes is nice because if it finds any additional requests that are added, it will add those to an existing cassette. None is nice if you have some requests that are sensitive and you don't ever want to hit them, you only want to play them back. And all is also nice for development if you're still experimenting with an API and always want to hit the API and never play back a cassette. Now you specify this configuration when you call the use cassette method on a VCR. For example, down here, you can say record once and it will have that behavior when you're calling use cassette. So going back to our spec, it would be nice if I could also pass these options in through here after I add the VCR tag here. So what I would like to do is call record all maybe, and then that would customize the VCR recording behavior. And we can do that inside of the VCR spec config file here, where I have that around block. And uh, notice I'm calling example metadata here, and this contains a hash of a lot of different information that's passed in, including our record option. And so I would like to extract out the options which are necessary to VCR and then pass those in here. And so I'm just going to gather these up into an options variable here. And if I call metadata.slice, I can extract out the options that I want that pertain to VCR, such as the record option, which I want to pay pass through. And there are other options you might want to add to this as well, such as the match requests on option. And if you want more options, you could just add them onto here. Now there is a little problem here though, is that metadata isn't just a simple hash, and I find it seems to persist this key called example group. So you might wanna also call accept example group onto this, so that way it doesn't include that key. Um, hopefully this will be fixed in the future. And then we just have to pass in those options to this use cassette call here, and that's it. So now with that record all options set, you can see it performs the request every time instead of playing it back. Now many times when you're working with an API, you have some kind of secret key that you don't want to include in the recordings. So it would be nice to filter that out. So for example here, uh, let's just say this is a secret key because I don't have one in this case. 
but let's say I want to filter out this URL right here. And we can do this inside of our VCR config block. There's an option called filter sensitive data, and you can just pass in some kind of unique string here, let's say WSDL with some angle brackets, and then inside of a block, you just pass in a string of whatever you want to filter out. So you would enter in your private keys and whatever else. And then the next time the cassette gets recorded, you can see the cassette includes the unique identifier instead of the private information. Now I wanna show you a technique that's not really specific to VCR, but it kinda of goes along with it and it's useful in certain situations. And that is sometimes you need to redirect the user to an external website have them do something and then come back to your site with a unique token or something. For example, you might need to do this with some uh, Twitter authentication or maybe the PayPal checkout process or something like that. Now I don't have a situation like this in this application, but let me just simulate it by um, say it searches Railscast. And what I wanna do is I wanna visit railscast.com and then fill in our search with uh, let's say how I test. And then I want to click on search episodes. And then I should see episode number uh, 275 because that's the how I test episode. Now this is going to fail because Capybara doesn't know how to visit external websites. Uh, it uses rack tests underneath which just uh, tests a rack application. It doesn't actually know how to handle HTTP at all. We can accomplish this by using Capybara Mechanize by Johan von Deck, and this uses Mechanize underneath to visit external URLs. So inside of the gem file, we can add Capybara Mechanize and run the bundle command to install it. And then inside of my spec helper file, I'm going to require Capybara Mechanize. And then inside of my spec, I'm going to set the current driver for Capybara to Mechanize. And I'm also going to add VCR to this spec as well. So let's run our specs and see what this does. Well, hey, look at that. We got two passing specs and it took 1.3 seconds because it's actually performing the request and visiting railscast.com. But if you look at the second time I ran it, less than half a second because it's performing the request using VCR and replaying back the tape. Awesome. Now one more quick note here, unrelated to VCR, uh, you may have noticed all this output here. It can make your test really noisy if you're performing a lot of requests. So you may want to disable that. Now this is specific to the Sevon library, which I covered in the previous episode, but to disable that logger, you can add these two lines to your spec helper file to turn off the logging. And now when we run our specs, nice clean output. Well, that's it for this episode on VCR. It's an awesome gem. I highly recommend you check out the Relish docs because there's a lot more great info there which I haven't covered here. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.